In the mid-19th century, a Frenchman named Léon Foucault became famous for swinging pendulums and claiming their consequent motions were proof of the Earth's diurnal rotation. Since then, Foucault pendulums have regularly been swinging at museums and exposition halls worldwide, purporting to provide everlasting perpetual proof of the heliocentric spinning ball Earth theory. The truth is, however, unbeknownst to most of the duped public, that Foucault's pendulum is a failed experiment which proves nothing but how easy it is for pseudoscience to deceive the malleable masses. Lady Blunt says, This pendulum, modern scientists tell us, affords a visible proof that we are living on a whirling globe, which, according to a work on science, now before me, is spinning upon its so-called axis at the rate of over a thousand miles an hour at the equator, and in addition to other motions is rushing on an everlasting tour around the sun, the diameter of which is said to be 813,000 miles, and its weight 354,936 times greater than the Earth, from which it is said to be about 93 million miles distant, at the rate of over a thousand miles per minute. Now to prove that the Earth really has these motions, a pendulum is suspended at the show. The showman sets motion and bids the gaping world of thoughtless men and women to behold a proof that we are living on a whirling globe which is rushing away through space. William Carpenter says, Astronomers have made experiments with pendulums which have been suspended from the interior of high buildings and have exulted over the idea of being able to prove the rotation of the earth on its axis by the varying direction taken by the pendulum over a prepared table underneath, asserting that the table moved round under the pendulum instead of the pendulum shifting and oscillating in different directions over the table. But, since it has been found that, as often as not, the pendulum went round the wrong way for the rotation theory. Chagrin has taken place of exaltation, and we have a proof of the failure of astronomers in their efforts to substantiate their theory. So to begin with, Foucault's pendulums do not uniformly swing in any one direction. Sometimes they rotate clockwise, and sometimes counterclockwise. Sometimes they fail to rotate, and sometimes they rotate far too much. Scientists who have repeated variations of the experiment have conceded time and again that, quote, it was difficult to avoid giving the pendulum some slight lateral bias at starting. The behavior of the pendulum actually depends on, one, the initial force beginning its swing, and two, the ball and socket joint used which most readily facilitates circular motion over any other. The supposed rotation of the earth is completely inconsequential and irrelevant to the pendulum's swing. If the alleged constant rotation of the Earth affected pendulums in any way, then there should be no need to manually start pendulums in motion. If Earth's diurnal rotation caused the 360-degree uniform diurnal rotation of pendulums, then there should not exist a stationary pendulum anywhere on Earth. Samuel Robotham says, First, when a pendulum constructed according to the plan of Mr. Foucault is allowed to vibrate, its plane of vibration is often variable. Not always. The variation, when it does occur, is not uniform, is not always the same in the same place, nor always the same either in its rate or velocity or in its direction. It cannot therefore be taken as evidence, for that which is inconstant cannot be used in favor of or against any given proposition. It therefore is not evidence and proves nothing. Secondly, if the plane of vibration is observed to change, where is the connection between such change and the supposed motion of the Earth? What principle of reasoning guides the experimenter to the conclusion that it is the Earth which moves underneath the pendulum, and not the pendulum which moves over the Earth? What logical right or necessity forces one conclusion in preference to the other? Thirdly, why was not the peculiar arrangement of the point of suspension of the pendulum specially considered in regards to its possible influence upon the plane of oscillation? Was it not known, or was it overlooked, or was it in the climax of theoretical revelry ignored that a ball and socket joint is one which facilitates circular motion more readily than any other? Lady Blunt says, We believe, with all due deference to the pendulum and its proprietor, that it proves nothing but the craftiness of the inventor, and we can only describe the show and showman as deceptions. A thing so childish as this pendulum proof that it can only be described as one of the most simple and ridiculous attempts to gull the public that has ever been conceived. 
It has been said that the pendulum experiment proves the rotation of the earth, but this is quite impossible, for one pendulum turns one way, and sometimes another pendulum turns in the opposite direction. Now we ask, does the earth rotate in opposite directions at different places at one and the same time? We should like to know. Perhaps the experimenters will kindly enlighten us on this point. If the earth had the terrible motions attributed to it, there would be some sensible effects of such motions. But we neither feel the motion, see it, nor hear it. And how people can stand watching the pendulum vibrate and think that they are seeing a proof of the motions of the earth almost passes comprehension. They are, however, brought up to believe it, and it is thought to be scientific to believe what the astronomers teach.